Hello, I hope you're staying productive and today I'm coming with a new video. It's really exciting because we've been working for the past few months on a brand new thing, fresh new idea, how deep system integration can be achieved between two different business systems. And in this case, we chose Azure DevOps and Teamhood. Of course, we took Azure DevOps as an example of a good engineering system to control product and software lifecycle. It has a lot of different features oriented around engineering activities. But when it comes to actual collaboration, cross-team collaboration, business uh, being involved together with product development, it becomes not that easy or it lacks in areas which are usually found in like professional project management or task management tools. And this way we looked at Azure DevOps as a database which has work items where engineers use them like user stories, tasks to make product changes, to capture the knowledge, what needs to be done. But then if we want to enable the collaboration with some, on something more lightweight, on something far more simpler, we need to integrate and place a layer on top which is a better front end. And this is what we did with Teamhood. We placed Teamhood as a graphical interface on top of Azure DevOps. So we always treat that Azure DevOps is the source of truth. But if you want to gain the next level of user experience, you integrate with Teamhood and you can control everything via Teamhood. So without further ado, let me show you what I mean by that. And I already uh, have Teamhood board on my screen, which has items created, it has rows and columns. It's like a small setup that I prepared for this demo. Um, and all these items, they're already integrated to Azure DevOps. And in Teamhood, that happens by creating a new integration. So I can just quickly open my integrations tab and I already know that there is one integration, which is Azure DevOps. I can actually add one more if I need to. Um, there are specific use cases where you might want to have different integrations. Maybe you want to take all Azure DevOps projects and display them in one board or vice versa. So there could be um, really neat tricks. But let's focus now about starting the new integration and I will show you how it works behind the scenes. This is really the interesting part. So if you want to do a new integration, you need two things. One thing is your Azure DevOps URL. So in general, that's something that you find in your browser, browser um, navigation pane and you just copy that URL and place it in here. And then the other thing is personal access token. For the uh, latest standards of security measures, we're using uh, those tokens to authenticate. You can get it in here. If I go to my Azure DevOps, I can click on my um, user settings and I can just access my personal tokens. You should create a new one, which is dedicated only to Teamhood and just make sure that you uh, allow Teamhood to have read and write permissions to manage work items. That's it. Once you're done, you will be presented with something else, which is, now I will use the one that I already created for this demo to save time, which is a JSON-driven um, configuration file where you can map anything you want as a property from Azure DevOps into a property in Teamhood. This is super powerful because it's not just stupid simple mapping where you just take one value and place uh, that value uh, on the other system. It also has a lot of neat tricks built in. It can synchronize entities when they do not exist. Like in this case, um, we're taking tags from Azure DevOps, but if the tag doesn't exist in Teamhood, we also create it in Teamhood automatically. We can have constants. So for instance, when I'm creating a new user story in Teamhood, it can have already predefined values, uh, which will be instantly uh, applied uh, to Azure DevOps work item. And also, it can have different value mappings even. So probably you're aware if you're using De Azure DevOps that there are thing called, uh, things called states, like new, active, resolved, and closed. So this symbolizes like the stage of the work, where the work is. And in some situations, and I believe in most situations, you will be looking at the board in Teamhood, which doesn't match the, the, the statuses, statuses of Teamhood. They can be far broader or there could be numerous statuses compared to far more numerous statuses compared to um, Azure DevOps. So what do you do then? Well, I don't want to name them the same way. I want to be able to flexibly decide which statuses I want to synchronize and which ones I don't. Or maybe I can use same Azure DevOps status but have two different statuses in Teamhood. 
that's why we have value mapping. Um, it gives uh, a bit of level of detail control for each specific entity. And you will need to test it yourself, but that's that's where the real power comes in. You, you kind of take Azure DevOps as database and build via Teamhood a nicer, better front end. Because in Azure DevOps, you're not getting a gun chart. You're not getting workload management or resource management. You're not getting a decent native time tracker. So there are plenty of gaps which can be filled in by software, which is oriented to daily efficient use uh, by any professional, not only te technical and engineering type of professionals, right? So, of course, this configuration file and overall Azure DevOps idea is geared towards engineering, but with Teamhood, you kind of relax that uh, focus and you say, okay, now anybody from business can come in and create tickets for engineering team via Teamhood as a front end. And you can align multiple teams in the same board, um, align multiple projects, and you can control everything far, far easier without losing all these feature gaps that I mentioned before. Now to just demonstrate how things work, let's open one item, which is already present. Um, it's a user story, which was created in Teamhood. Now I instantly get um, a link to open Azure DevOps. So let's do a split screen, actually. This will be the most interesting part. So this is my split screen. Um, on the left, we see Teamhood, and on the right, we see Azure DevOps. These are exactly the same work items. Now, let's try and, and change something. Let's see what happens if I uh, change the description. So maybe I will, I will write some like bullet points and say um, bullet one, uh, bullet two, and then I will save the description. It instantly is refreshed and appears on the right side of Azure DevOps. If I want, um, to create a tag, I can do the same thing. Um, I can just say, okay, so what, what are my tags? Well, let's say add another tag. And it is instantly appearing in here. That's super cool. And if I create a tag which is not present in Teamhood, maybe we can new unique tag. I can save it. I can maybe also change the title. Supplement with additional data. I can save it. Now, it's not instantly reflected in Teamhood. That is because it's still two-way synchronization, but we treat Azure DevOps as database, so we pull for changes on hourly basis because we treat that Teamhood is the way to enter the new data. When you enter new data from Teamhood, it instantly appears in Azure DevOps, but if you were to change something in Azure DevOps, it will be synchronized on hourly basis. If we're not that uh, patient, we can, we can just simply click Synchronize Now, and you see, my new tag just appeared, my title changed. Magic, right? A lot, a lot of things can be achieved in that manner. So engineers can work in their standalone Azure DevOps boards because it does have Kanban. Azure DevOps has Kanban board, which is decent, decent enough to work on um, smaller amounts of data or have like this structure uh, where I can present uh, items as cards. But it is so far from what Teamhood is capable of, uh, with flexible limits on row levels, with different approach to swim lanes, with nested upstream and downstream processes, how much can be decorated on Kanban cards, and how easy it is to manage relations between different items. This is, this is the big advantage, and there are many productivity features in Teamhood, like multiple actions, you can filter display different different views at the same board like list views gantt views you can switch the timeline or workload it gives you a lot of power still on the same data so it depends on on your preferences and on on your line of work but we believe mainly that teamwood is the standard go-to as a front end and you will manage your data uh, via our tool and then azure devops will serve as a repository to keep your work uh, work item knowledge base um, and, and enable engineers to continue working on their own uh, convenient manners, which they were used to probably um, from some time ago. So having said that, I just displayed you how the integration works in two way. Now, uh, one more thing I want to show you uh, a bit of configuration and what's neat with it is that I can actually uh, map any, as I mentioned, any field and I will do uh, an example how I can map assigned user 
Uh, by the way, it also has autocomplete. Uh, we look up instantly to see what, what value can you choose, which values can you choose from. So what I'm doing right now, I am taking a signed uh, assigned field from uh, Azure DevOps and I want to map it to teamhood field, which is named similarly with autocomplete as well. So you always have like a co-pilot which suggests you uh, and and helps you not to dwell and, and guesswork what, what are things called because it's the, com the most complicated part, I think, finding out which what are the right field names. Uh, then I validate and save. And if I did everything correctly, it will be a successful synchronization. So now uh, we just quickly check and instantly my initials appear on these tasks because, yeah, I just, I just assigned these items to myself. Uh, and if we go back to my work item, which I used before, uh, let's go back on the right screen a couple of times. Um, yeah, this is this is the one. So if I change assignee now from teamhood and I pick myself, it should appear right away on the right side as it did. Again, magic, seamless and super efficient. So this is the main idea. Teamhood as a front end is extremely fast oriented into user experience. It delights you every day. And then Azure DevOps is a very good system to keep everything around project um, or, or software changes. But it's not only the work items. They need to tackle a lot of different things, pull requests, releases, um, code repositories. So that system is not like focused only on the work and project management. That's why Teamhood is superior in this case. In the end, there are many more possibilities with Azure DevOps configuration. I will not delve into them today but there will be more detailed technical videos oriented into how to configure different work, um, work cases. And you will be able to map hierarchy, top level items, child items, different item types. You will be able to create um, different structures uh, on your rows. Now I'm using iterations as my rows. It's, they are mapped. You can even map rows in Teamhood to iterations or areas or any other thing you might imagine. If you have a custom field in Azure DevOps and you create a custom field in Teamhood, you can also map it. You can map different values from those fields. So possibility-wise, it's quite endless. You will you will figure out new scenarios on the go. I, 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 don't, I, I have no doubts in here. But for today, that's kind of it. I really wanted to showcase and tell you about this new fresh idea. Um, we're, clo we're, we're out of beta phase already and we will be releasing the full version uh, by the end of August. So you can start fiddling with it right away. Um, it, it has all the power I just showed you. And yeah, and if you have uh, additional ideas and comments for us, just let us know. Write us uh, under the comment section in the videos or yeah, just ping us on our contact forms. Thank you. Mm -hmm.